All right, we got some connections. We um, sent a little bit of data, but now we're going to handle some disconnections. So we could do this in a console, but for what I want to teach, it'll be a little more difficult. So let's go over here and add a new project and C sharp. And we'll add a form application. Uh, just name it server underscore GUI and client underscore GUI. All right. So for the server, we need to add a couple of things. Let's add listen. Um, that's fine. We don't need to do that big. And let's add a mm, list box. And let's add a text box. And our send button. All right. So we have our server set up. Ah, set up. Can't talk tonight. Now that we have our GUI for that, look, we could make the, let's just make the GUI for our client verse. And let's just add a text box. Another button. This will be our connect button. And let's add a list box like before. And you can just copy and paste this. This will be our send button. All right, now that we have our server and our client designed, let's get to a little bit of code. Using system.net. Using system.net.sockets. And now let's make a couple of variables. Socket. This will be our main socket. And socket except. Now we're going to be a little lazy today, so let's make a socket method that will create a socket just like in, for example, C. And then return new socket. Address family of inner network, socket type dot stream, and protocol type dot TCP. So this will create our TCP socket, and all you have to do, well, you'll see it later on. And now let's, um, oops, what, which one are we working on? All right. Now let's click on listen. And sock equals socket. Wasn't that easy? Now sock dot bind new IP endpoint, zero, mm, let's use port three, and socket.listen, zero. Now we're going to make a new thread, so using system.threading, now new thread, dot start, You can either do this or you can do um, delegate. It's really up to you. Now, um, I can explain this. I'll explain this later on. Let's just type it for now. Basically, what this is doing, like last time, I think I did it last time, is it just creates a new thread for data to run, and we can look that up later on if you want. Now, except equals socket dot except and let's just put a message box all right now that we have our listener set up after we accept this connection we don't need it anymore so dispose of our listener socket and now that we I'm getting confused. 
Okay. Now that we have listened, after we have our accepted socket, now we have to begin reading of that socket. So we can just use the same thread, and we'll make a while true loop. And byte buffer equals new byte 255 and int rest equals accept.receive buffer 0 buffer dot length and 0 if rest less than equals 0 then throw new socket exception now with sockets at least in, if you're using native sockets with APIs, it will return, receive will return zero if there's a disconnection. Now in .NET, sometimes it'll throw an exception, sometimes it'll return zero, so it just depends, so check for both. And array.resize ref buffer to the actual red size and invoke method invoker delegate listbox one dot items dot add encoding dot default dot get string buffer now you should always rename your controls but this is just a tutorial and you can do that on your own time so you don't have to pay attention to this much at the moment. Basically what this is doing is since we're running our um, accepting and our receiving on a new thread, if we try it with just this, then it'll throw an exception about cross-thread calls. So what this is doing is that it's um, running this code on the main thread of the form. So nothing throws any errors and yeah, and now that we have this going, this should work pretty well, we need to add a try catch, just in case, because sometimes .NET throws an exception, if there's a disconnection, and let's just make a message box, disconnection, and application.exit. So now that we have our server set up, let's go and code our client. Oops, forgot to send. Okay, and now we have to code our send button. It's actually pretty simple. All we have to do is uh, I can't think right now. Socket byte data equals encoding dot default dot get bytes text box one dot text and now accept dot send data zero data dot length and zero now if the socket is disconnected and you try and call send then it'll also throw an exception but right now we're just doing it for here. It's pretty it's basically the same thing as this. You're just using the try catch to find the error. And now that we have everything coded here, let's go to our client now and um, let's click on connect. Oops. Using system.net.sockets using system.net. Oh. Well, it's not technically wrong, but it bugs me if it's not like that. So, now let's create a new socket. And we can just copy the method over from here. Now, sock equals... Sock equals new socket. New equals socket. And now sock dot connect new IP endpoint IP 
address.parse, textbox1.text, and the port we're using is 3. Now we can do if. Wait, is this a. No, oops. Okay. That's the API. Try. Catch. If it, if it can't connect, then we'll just show a message box. And well, our connector is done. Now let's go to our sender. And it's basically the same thing. It's, well, it is the same thing. Byte data equals new byte. Oops. Uh, encoding. Dot default. Dot get bytes. Text box two dot text. And then soft dot send data zero data dot length and zero. Now we need to do the same thing we did here, but a little differently. So let's make a new void and we'll just name it read. And like we did in the server, new thread, oops, using system threading. Thread. Mm -hmm. Start. And just call read. While true. Now this code should work the same in both sides. So if you're lazy, then you can just copy and paste the whole thing unless you want to type it again. And let's just do that. Try. Catch. Byte. Buffer equals a new byte, 255. Int rest equals socket, socket.receive. Buffer, 0. Buffer.length, and 0. If rest less than equals 0, then throw new socket exception. Array dot resize ref buffer zero oops not zero that will be nothing and resize the byte array invoke method invoker delegate list box one dot items dot add encoding dot default dot get string buffer this looks, oops, that's one thing. Message box dot show. This connection. And then application dot exit. And this looks pretty much the same. So let's try it out. Hopefully I didn't screw up too bad. So let's run our GUI server first. And listen. Let's run our GUI client and so local address connect and connection accepted and let's just send some data. Hello from server and and that is how you make a simple. Oops, we forgot to do our main check. I'm checking for disconnections. So let's do this a little. Um, let's go to the client and do form closing plus equals and just tab twice and it'll do it for you. And then sock.close. So if we run this again, and if we close our client, and it caused um, 
call disconnection for both since the sockets were closed so hmm. oops my mistake call break um, actually close the socket and then break and then after in here call application dot exit okay and let's try this again And if we close our client, disconnection, disconnection. And then the application closes. And that is a simple way to handle disconnections. Next tutorial, we'll be able to send more data. Uh, I can't speak right now. Um, you know, you'll see next tutorial, we'll be handling more data on how to read data successfully. And people were asking me how you can read more than 255, say if you were sending a file or images, etc., etc. Next tutorial, you'll find out how to do that. And I'm going to go to bed now. Hopefully I didn't screw you guys up, and I'll see you next tutorial.